Hello everyone, Kyle here. In this video, we're diving into an excerpt from the Project Finance Modeling Package. And the purpose of this video is to understand how the balance sheet really fits together. So let's dive in, starting from the learning objectives. Learning objectives are, where does the balance sheet sit in a financial model? Recap the purpose of the balance sheet and see the matrix how the financial statements are comprised of 10 to 15 accounts reorganized, and finally, how to balance a balance sheet. So as you would have suspected, the balance sheet sits amongst the other financial statements. Let's recap the purpose of a balance sheet. The balance sheet is made up of three big chunks, equity, liabilities, and assets. It keeps track of what the company owns, versus what it owes. That's how the assets of the company are financed. So what is it again that we're balancing? Here is the accounting equation, which you may recall from beginner accounting courses. Let's zoom out slightly. This is one of the three financial statements. The cash flow waterfall or cash flow statement recognizes when cash comes in or goes out the door. The P&L, or income statement, recognizes when assets or liabilities are earned or consumed. And one of the jobs of the balance sheet is to keep track of the timing difference between the two of these. For example, we have $10,000, and we paid that $10,000 for a piece of equipment that is paid in cash. But it is not used up in that period, so it goes on the balance sheet. Each period, an increment of its economic value is used up. So we depreciate it, P&L, and the balance sheet amount is smaller. How about another example? We earn $500 revenue, P&L. We receive $300 cash, cash or waterfall, and we need to account for the $200 unreceived. So it becomes $200 accounts payable. In both cases, the balance sheet is recognizing the timing between the payment for something and when it is consumed. In other words, what future benefit or obligation is expected to arise? The second piece that you should take away from this is that where you have an item in one statement, there is always one or more associated items in the other statements. And that's what we're trying to balance. The three-way statements are made up of 10 or so of these interconnected items. Let's examine where other connections are. Let's look at an easy one to start. Dividends are here on the cash flow waterfall and here on the P&L. There is no timing difference between when the dividend is accrued and when it is paid. So there's no associated item on the balance sheet. So dividends paid in cash decrease the cash balance, which shows up here on the balance sheet, and the dividend expense on the P&L decreases the retained earnings, which decreases the retained earnings on the balance sheet. So as per the accounting equation, assets decrease and equity decreases. We've mentioned fixed assets. Remember the three-way statements. Here you have the cash flow item, the P&L item, and the balance sheet item. Where do these items come through in the financial statements? There's two parts to this. Part one, the cash we spend on CapEx is here on the cash flow waterfall, which reduces cash on the balance sheet at the same time as building up an asset on the balance sheet. So we're reducing on the asset side of the equation, cash, at the same time as increasing the asset side through fixed assets. So the net effect is no change in total assets and the accounting equation balances. Part two is we then depreciate that asset, P&L, which affects retained earnings on the balance sheet and that depreciation expense reduces the value of the asset, also on the balance sheet. So equity decreases and assets decrease and the accounting equation balances. So hopefully you're getting a feeling that the P&L and the cash or waterfall both affect the balance sheet 
and we're keeping a keen eye on how that accounting equation is balancing. Let's look at the account for working capital here. This is like a three-way statement with cash receipts, cash or waterfall, revenue, p and and trade debtors, balance sheet. And note, generally the way we represent cash receipts on the cash or waterfall, as we've discussed, is using revenue and then backing out the network and capital adjustments. On the cash or waterfall, this changes the cash balance, which shows up in the cash balance on the balance sheet. Revenue on the P&L changes the retained earnings, which shows up on the balance sheet. And since these changes are different on account of the network and capital adjustments, there's another balancing item, trade debtors on the balance sheet. And the accounting equation balances. Let's quickly go through expenses. They're similar with cash payments, cash or waterfall, OPEX, P&L, and trade creditors balance sheet. We can look at tax. If you have deferred tax assets or liabilities, it's a bit more complicated. But here we've simplified things by using tax payable instead of tax expense. Tax paid is a cash item. Tax payable sits on the P&L. And tax creditors is the balancing item between them. And lastly, connected are your senior debt balance sheet and the principal repayments, cash or waterfall, which are paying that senior debt down. And then another pair are your interest on the cash or waterfall and your interest on the P&L. We're assuming no timing difference between them, so there's no balance sheet item. So that should give you a really good insight into balance sheets and the interdependencies between the financial statements. You should now be able to see what I mean when I say that the financial statements are pretty much a series of accounts, but rearranged into all the cash flow items in one group, then the P&L items in the second group, and then the third items in the third group, the balance sheet items. So I really hope now that you can feel like you can see the matrix and how they fit together. Let's go and do that in Excel.